see uh, routing protocol configuration on ASA first we will see I will tell you the syntax of how to define the static route just I will show you the syntax and then we will remove it then we will configure the uh, this one dynamic routing so this is your inside right R5 so IP interface brief it is having the loopback 5.5.5.5 right if you ping your directly connected interface to the ASA is 10.1.1.10 right you are able to ping it why because you are going with the source address is 10.1.1.5 but if you ping 10.1.1.10 with the source is 5.5.5.5 you will not be able to ping it why because this ASA does not have the route back to the 5.5.5.5 let's say if you ping 5.5.5.5 you will get the message no route to host this one so how to define the route static route ok the command remains the same for default route as well so route no IP no IP because no IP never <coughs> IP uh, sorry route for what you are deciding or for what you are defining this route that you have to say that logical name so you are de decide uh, de you are defining the route for the inside network the network which is reached via inside zone so inside what is the destination network 5.5.5.5 subnet mask this one slash 32 and the next stop address gateway so 10.1.1.6 that's the syntax syntax means how you define the static route the static route syntax is route the logical name yeah 6 5 sorry so route command is route then logical name the destination network and at last the next op the next op now ping right so that was the static routing thing and how to remove it with the following thing no route again if you ping you will not get the route so that was the syntax of this one now let's configure the routing protocol on ASA so this is our topology we will configure RIP on inside OSPF on outside EAGRP on DMZ ok router RIP no auto summary no version 1 you don't have to give no version 1 but I am just making it strict version 2 only network 10.1.1.0 so that's how I enable RIP on the inside zone now let's enable OSPF on outside zone network 20.1.1.0 no wildcard mask ok I enable OSPF on outside network outside interface router EAGRP 10 no auto summary network 30.1.1.0 I enable EAGRP on this thing so route is the command to check the routing table so route ok no so ip route but just so route as of now you are getting the rip network from inside because inside router router 5 is already configured with rip routing protocol in our previous video i think <coughs> now we will configure ospf and eagrp onto the router of 6 and router 7 respectively so let's go to r6 so ip interface brief only one network is there so let's create one more loopback address slash 32 router ospf1 network 20.1.1.0 here in router you have to type wildcard mask network 5.5.5.5 And you should be having the OSPF adjacency. So IP OSPF neighbor. See you got the message over here. The adjacency is been done. It is passed through with eight stages. What are the eight stages of OSPF neighborship? I said what are the eight stages of forming forming the neighborship? Start, attempt, initialize. Okay, done. I did not remember the last thing. Last things. 
but most of the people forget for first one there is a new uh, this uh, stage is called attempt yeah so so ip route you will not get any ospf route as of now in this one r6 because osp uh, because asa is not advertising any other extra route but asa will get the route as 6.6.6.6 learn via ospf so route uh, did we advertise this one so ip protocol Oh, we advertise 5.5.5.5. .5 .5 .5. Actually, we have to advertise. We had to advertise 6.6.6. Router OSPF one, no network. 5.5.5.5. .5 network 6.6.6.6. .6. Now we should be able to see it over here. It takes some time, but it will come. Okay, you see. It. Right, so OSPF neighborship. That's how you configure the OSPF routing protocol. No big deal, just very simple thing. Now let's configure the EGRP on R7. You don't have any other extra network, so let's create one loopback. ID is uh, network is <coughs> slash 32. Right. Router EAGRP 10, no auto summary, network 30.1.1.0, network 7.7.7.7. See, EAGRP adjacency has been already formed. So, IP EAGRP neighbor with ASA. ASA ID is 30.1.1.10. Now, go to ASA and check whether do you have the routes or not. So, IP route. So, route not so IP route you can check this thing now we will see the uh, now we will see how to redistribute from one routing protocol to another routing protocol why do we need the redistribution because let's say if R5 wants to reach R6 how will he reach or let's say R5 want to reach to R7 or back and forth so we use the redistribution. Redistribution you, you might have learned in CCNP only, right? So how to do redistribution in OSPF? We will do like this one. We will do like RIP into OSPF and EAGRP. OSPF into EAGRP and RIP. EAGRP into OSPF and RIP. All two is, I mean, a full mess kind of thing. Okay? So every router should be having the reachability to any other network. So the redistribution process remains the same only. Router RIP go to any routing protocol and redistribute OSPF process ID 1. No, you don't have to RIP. Okay. RIP, I am giving the metric as 2. Redistribute EAGRP 10 metric 2. That's how you do the redistribution from any other protocol into the re RIP. Let's go to R5 and check it. See, 26, 7. So those networks has been already redistributed. But you will not see this network, I mean uh, this one. 5 and 10 you on the R6 and R7, you will not see it. So IP route, see you don't have the 5 and 7 plus 10, you don't have 10 we have because 10 we static route we had given, right? Static route we had given. No, it's okay, let it be because we can check it with the loopback addresses, whether it's updated or not. Router OSPF 1, redistribute, RIP. Okay, sorry. Otherwise, if you don't follow with the subnets, it will summarize automatically. Okay. Then, redistribute EAGRP. We are under the OSPF process, right? Which process we are into? EAGRP or? Okay, we are into the OSPF process. So, when, when we are into the OSPF process, 
for two routing protocol we have to redistribute into rip in agrp rip we did just now and now agrp okay now if you go to outside network this is your outside right you should be able to see the e2 external right in the similar way you go to agrp redistribute uh, rip okay we have to give some default matrix uh, that is five element bandwidth <coughs> delay is 30 second let's say reachability 255 is the this one 255 again let's say mtu is 500 1 2 3 that's it only five metric now let's redistribute the ospf 1 redistribution is not big thing right i think i hope you everybody knows this thing from ccna from ccnp if you go to r7 now you should be able to see all the route <coughs> see ex right so that was the redistribution of this thing now let's give the security to the routing protocol in rip how can you configure the security to protect the routing protocol updates key ring right so i'll not show you the rip one i'll show you the agrp and ospf so rip you can configure by yourself okay ospf network is r6 right okay router ospf1 authentication area 0 authentication see in ospf you can have two type of authentication one is called uh, no yeah two type of authentication one is clear text and one is md5 okay another thing is you have two ways of configuring the authentication one is area based one is interface based one is area based one is in uh, interface based so if you want to configure the area based authentication then you have to go to the routing process just now i went router ospf and under this one you have to execute this command that is called area based authentication configuration okay and interface base is interface fa0/0 where you have already enabled the ospf ip ospf authentication and see if you directly type authentication key that is your plain text but if you want to configure with the md5 authentication and message digest that is saying that i want to configure the message digest authentication means md5 authentication this is not the key this is just you are saying that i want to use the md5 authentication type so how to define the ospf key message digest key ip ospf message digest key and then you give the key id and the cisco 123 and see over here if you have if you had noticed this thing neighbor ship is been down if you see debug ip ospf mm, i just want to show you that if this code is this one zero means no authentication one means clear uh, uh, clear text see here zero means no authentication null authentication here okay if you doubt in your adjacencies this one zero means null authentication if there is a one means other party is using clear text let's see let's go to ospf asa router ospf1 area 
zero authentication what we used over there message digest right here i don't want to use the message digest plain clear text i want to use ospf authentication ospf authentication key cisco 123 go to your uh, r6 see previously it was what zero, zero. now it is what one. one one means clear it is authentication but clear text no message digest now let's change it let's go to router ospf area 0 authentication message digest interface is zero ospf authentication message digest ospf message digest key 1 md5 cisco 123 right see this was one right now you will see it is forming the adjacency but we will find it out that where that l2 is there i just want to show you that type 1 type 0 and type 2 type 2 means message authentication with md5 type 0 means no authentication null authentication type win 1 means clear text authentication so the if the question is how many types of authentication is been supported in ospf 3 null means no authentication 1 means clear text and md5 eagrp does not support the clear text authentication in asa so now let's uh, configure the osp uh, eagrp authentication over here <coughs> interface e2 eagrp is long command so md5 okay let's check again do you have the uh, so spf neighbor you have the neighborship again formed up okay now let's configure the eagrp authentication eagrp in asa does not support the clear text authentication but router to router it supports okay so in in asa how to configure the eagrp authentication go to the interface where you have configured or enable the eagrp so here in our case we have enable on the e2 right then you type authentication key first you have to say that which mode which means whether it's a clear text or md5 since it is only supporting md5 so you will not get any other options mode and then eagrp what is the process id 10 right md5 that's it so that you are saying that i am going to use the md5 authentication authentication key eagrp 10 cisco 123 key id 1 this key id is nothing but when you configure 
key chain in EIGRP in router that is same thing see authentication failure how, how do you configure the authentication EIGRP authentication in router how do you configure ok interface fa0 zero slash 0 right then ok So that's what we, when we execute the command md5, it is similar over here as well. The only thing is it starts with the IP, okay. But there in ASA we directly define like this one. In one line we have defined the key and key id. But in router you have to create the key chain. And that key chain you have to apply on the interface. See here. Where was it? it I will show you again, anyway we are configuring this right. So exit out, how to create keychain, key and keychain, keychain name let's say EAGRP auth is my keychain name, ok under this one you have to give key key id this one under key you have to give the key string cisco 123 <coughs> now you go to interface fa0 slash 0 ip authentication eigrp ip, EIGR, IP authentication keychain eigrp process number is autonomous number is 10 and the word of keychain not the key EIGRP oath done so what is the process over here so run section key chain interface FAST Ethernet 0 slash 0 So that's how you create the keychain. Command is keychain, then name, then give the key ID. Where is that key ID? Over here. That's your key ID. This is your key ID, right? Here, this one Cisco123 is key string. Here you define the key string over here. And then where to apply? Here. So run interface FA0 slash 0 where you have configured EAGRP. There you have to apply like this one ok done so rip is having the same process as EAGRP so you will understand it right ok save this configuration let us move towards next thing so what we have done so far authentication we have done redistribution we have done authentication with three type we have done now Now we will configure ICMP things, ICMP messages. This one, <coughs> let us say my requirement is, ok, before I say my requirement because uh, it does not make any sense, if I apply, I am going to R5, ok, I am going to R5. I am configuring access list 101 deny ip any any see here clearly ok interface fa0 slash 0 ip access group 101 in what did I do now just now hmm? I said that any traffic is coming on this interface inbound direction you deny it right it applies for everything it means that even if I am coming
if I am trying to ping 10.1.1.5, I will not be able to ping. Let's say, let's check it. Go to ASA, ping 10.1.1.5, right? Let's remove that exercise and check it. Or rather, so access list, you will see the it counts, right? Now, if the same access list I apply on ASA, what will happen? Let's say access list 101 deny IP any any, right? Access group 101 in in inside, right? Are you getting what I am doing? Okay. So, according to this one, I should not be able to ping, right? Right or wrong? I am not able to ping. Who is denying this? Which access list is denying my ping? Okay, I will show you. Let's, let's say. No, let's see. Interface API 0 slash 0, no IP access group 101 in. Ping. Done. This access is were denying. Yes, yes, but it is not denying. So what it is saying? We have applied in, we have applied inbound direction access list on ASA on interface that say that says that deny any traffic, even though it is not denying. So what it says? Access list in ASA cannot filter the traffic which is destined to ASA. That is the difference. ACL in router, ACL in ASA. Router can filter the traffic which is destined to the router or passing through the router. Okay, but in ASA, only passing through traffic can be filtered via ACL. Okay, it cannot filter the traffic which is destined to the ASA. There is the major difference. One more difference in access list is you use access list, uh, you, you use the wildcard mask in uh, router by at the time of configuration access list, whereas in ASA you use the subnet mask only. But major difference is this one. Traffic cannot be filtered if it is destined to the ASA. Now, <coughs> my requirement is, so that that major change, uh, the major feature of access list I showed you right just now. Now my requirement is, I should be able to ping anyone. I am ASA. Okay, I am speaking as uh, on behalf of ASA, and I am saying that my requirement, I should be able to ping anyone. Nobody should be able to ping me. That's my requirement, and that is the typical implementation in the live networks. Nobody will reveal the ASA or a IPS or anything into your network because those are guards. If someone is knowing your guard, they can, you know, launch some attacks against the guard. Once the guard is paralyzed, the whole network is paralyzed. So the requirement is firewall should not be replying back, should not reply back to anything, whether ping or anything. Okay, so how do I configure it? It's very easy and very simple. Go to ASA. Okay, in the global configuration only, I ICMP deny any outside. What I said just now, ICMP deny any outside. It says that any traffic do not go. <coughs> Initial traffic should not accept it. That's what. Echo should not be accepted. That's what I am saying. Let's say. Uh, outside means R6, right? Let's ping. Let's remove it. See. The moment you remove this one, you go, right? Again, you implement it. And again, you try to ping him. 
you are also unable to be but your requirement was what you should be able to reach anyone you should be able to get the reply back but he should not be anyone should not be able to ping you so this is not the right solution right so remove it icmp deny any outside deny any echo not echo reply just echo echo outside you are talking about inbound direction you don't want to expect any echo from outside echo reply you want because when you send the echo you want reply back so let's test test it again did you uh, miss anything over here we put anything over here oh i am writing deny statement i see mp permit any echo reply outside if you ping from here it is always about the in incoming it's not outgoing why it was not working with the echo because i was writing with the deny i did not notice it so it, this statement uh, in the case of the you will permit the echo then rc also yes 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 it is okay but i wanted to show you that variation but i forgot to notice that it was uh, deny statement implicit is deny only right <coughs> so that's how you achieve let's say in the exam if something comes do not try with the access list access list will not block this thing so that is icmp you can enable this thing and these are the messages anywhere icmp unreachable rate limit that you want to you know uh, you don't want to what is the meaning of icmp unreachable where in which situation icmp unreachable any device is sending in which case let's say if i am sending ping message to you in which case you will send me back the icmp unreachable exactly right when you don't have the destination reachable to you you will notify the source back that i don't have the reachability for what you are reaching that is called ip icmp unreachable the type is 3 icmp type is 3 code is 0 okay so sometime what happens let's say if i am sending you like thousands of packet for which you don't have the routes so actually you there is a load on you which load that you have to send me back icmp unreachable unnecessary thing that you want to rate limit that you don't want to you know you you don't want yourself to be exhausted with this this kind of messages so you can rate limit by using this command icmp unreachable rate limit and the <coughs> number of packets in per second okay now we will see two thing one is object tracking and another is radar interface for that we need to configure hmm? yes 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 i also see here i am connecting i am connecting one more uh interface this one is here this one outside is e0 and e3 both are connecting to outside 
just make sure this this make a note of it and another let's say e0 is in the network of 20.1.1.0 whereas e3 is in the network of 40.1.1.0 first we will see the object tracking and then i will show you the uh, redundant interface okay so object tracking is something first i will explain on the board so you will understand this one because in gns i cannot show you this so the moment the tracking ip address tracking ip address is by the way provided by whom service provider they will give you one ip address let's say in our topology this r6 is acting as a service provider okay and we want we bought just now we bought one connection they are giving that you track down 6.6.6.6 the moment 6.6.6.6 is not reachable i will consider that i am unable to provide you the service okay So first, you ping six dot six dot six. Are you able to ping? Yes, you are reachable. They are giving you this IP address. So how to configure this thing is SLA monitor one any ID. Okay, SLA monitor in any, any ID. Hmm? Yes, it is there. Then you type echo. protocol icmp which ip address you want to track that's what it is saying 6.6.6.6 where it is located where it is located outside it's outside right enter then frequency how often you want to send it to the What message just now we got? Frequency should not be less than the time or value. Let's say time out is thirty second. Frequency. That options you can easily know by browsing it. So run SLA monitor. See this much we have configured so far. SLA monitor, service level monitor, a service level agreement monitor, and ID is like how many? Let's say if you are having 50 to 60 connection, you may have different different SLA monitor, different different agreement with the different different service provider. So this is called the creation of the SLA in this one, and it is using the ICMP echo to track down the 6.6.6.6. Okay, but it is not started as of now. okay but before we implement this thing uh we do not have any ip addressing assigned on e3 right so let's assign the ip addressing on e3 no shutdown and name if we will say that outside 1 or outside 2 Okay. Let's go to R six and change this. Uh, give the IP addressing to the interface IP zero slash one forty dot one dot one dot six ping forty dot one dot one dot ten. Right. from here you should be able to ping 40.1.1.6 okay great so 40.1.1.6 is the another ip isp's ip address gateway whereas 20.1.1.6 is the primary one then both are reachable whereas primary one has given you the ip address to track down it is 6.6.6.6 and it is also reachable just now you have configured the 
एस एल ए मोनिटर आई डी ओके नाव यू हेव टू क्रिएट द ऑब्जेक्ट सो ट्रेक ऑब्जेक्ट नेम आर टी आर इज अ रिस्पॉन्स टाइम रिपोर्टर मीन्स दैट फ्रॉम फ्रॉम सोर्स टू द डेस्टिनेशन हाउ मच टाइम इट विल टेक एंट्री नंबर अगेन रिचेबिलिटी सी this one ob object this this track and then the number whatever you are getting track and this number whatever you are getting is the object number it should not be needing to the uh, same as sla monitor okay then when you type this rtr this says that response time reporter means which one you want to track down that object you are creating which which service you want to use for this response time reporting so what we have created just now sla so sla we want to use over here let's say uh, i say can policy not i say can policy what we can say this one the best example according to this one we need to create a class map and yeah class map yeah 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 class map and then into the policy map right so this one object tracking is another concept and sla is another concept okay so you are calling sla into the object thing reachable RTR now after RTR it should be the same as SLA. So SLA is one reachability. Okay, done. Now you create the default route. So route. Do you have any default route? Zero dot zero dot zero. Do you have any? No, right? So how to define the default route? Route outside zero dot zero dot zero dot zero. Or, or you can define like this one, zero and zero. <coughs> Then next up address is twenty dot one dot one dot six. That's it. That's how you define, right? But with object track, sorry. No, no, no. It is dynamic routing protocol is already over. it is still there so i am not removing that configuration but we are dealing with something else in dynamic routing protocol you don't have default route right if some networks are not there in your routing table where you will send the packet that's what that's why we need the default route see 20.1.1.6 is there right let's say if r6 R6 is having the loop back. Let's say three IP address 60.1.1.1. I have created one more loop back address. It is unknown to ASA, right? If you go to ASA, you don't have route to to 60.1.1.1, right? But since you have default gateway, you will be able to reach one, right? because of default gateway right yeah wait wait now go to the router 6 interface ap0/0 shut down it it's your whatever you have set the next stop address 20.1.1.6 is the ip address of ap0/0 in router 6 right now again go to asa ping 60. Dot, yeah 60.1.1.1 not reachable right if you check so route still default route is 20.1.1.6 only so but with the tracking and sla monitor what we are going to do is if 20.1.1 i mean if 6.6.6.6 not 20.1.1.6 now we are going to track the 6.6.6 if it is unreachable whatever we have configured the primary default way default gateway should be removed and the backup should be activated that's what our requirement is so how to define <coughs> so what we have configure first let uh, let me show you this thing sla monitor we have configured so run track we have configured track number 10 and it is tracking sla monitor 1 okay but we did not start it this is like creating the access list and applying it we created every single thing but we did not start the process so how to start the process is 
SLA monitor. This is not applying. I am not applying it. Application is still there. Still it is uh, uh, remain unconfigured. SLA monitor schedule. Entry number one means which entry? SLA. Start time now. Life forever. You start now and you start keep tracking those, keep sending the ICMP eco messages forever until and unless I remove it. Now the process is started. Now <coughs> the process is started. Now if you capture any packet over here. You have Wireshack installed, right? Now you will see that ICMP. Let's see. No, it's not there. But you can check. If you are doing this practical on GNS, you can capture this packet and you will see that ICMP packet is sent, reply is sent, sent, sent. Every two seconds it, you will see it. Okay? But we did not apply it onto the default routing thing. What we can create it, SLA monitor we created, we created the object, object tracking. And that in the object tracking we call the SLA monitor. But now we want to use that object tracking into the route defining. Okay? So now you remove this. Default route what you had given, I am removing it. How to define with the object tracking like this one? Route outside 0 slash 0 20.1.1.6 and then track object number 10 right okay this is your primary one okay now configure secondary one route outside outside 2 not outside outside 2 because the redundant one is having the outside 2 0 0 what is the gateway Is it still disabled? Okay. That's why. Oh. See what happened? The moment no, the moment we shut down that interface, our six dot six dot six was also unreachable because of the routing protocol right but it will come up don't worry i enable right aren't we advertising six dot network in r6 yes we advertising yes now it is Okay, so run route. We have only one next stop address configured, right? This is metric, right? Not metric. Which one is AD, right? AD value. So now you have to configure the backup route with greater AD value. So it will not be into the running configuration as of now. So route outside 2, 0, 0. Next stop address is 40.1.1.6. Let's say 3. Right? Now let's say, so route. Do you have? Why it is 40.1.1.6? It should be 20.1.1.6, right? How many routes we have configured?
let's define all the route again because previously it was route outside 00 20.1.1.6 break 10 10 right so run SLA monitor schedule type time ok then you define backup route let's check it whether it's installed or not default route is not installed why? Why it is not showing? It's not showing actually, but it should show the same thing. We'll do this practical again. In rake only we'll do this thing. Why it is not showing, I don't know. Now we will see object tracking again we will see tomorrow. Okay. Today I will uh, prepare this rack so we don't have to deal with the GNS again. Now we will see redundant interface. Okay. Redundant interface is the concept where you are bundling two physical interface into one. You are bundling two physical interface into the one. So, if one in physical interface goes down, another physical interface should take over. Like, like exactly right. Ether channel lens ACNP. Same thing. So, let us remove this IP addressing on E0 and E2, uh, E3. Interface E0, no name if, no IP address. Interface E3, no IP address no name if so redundant interface you understood the concept redundant interface one physical interface goes down another physical active interface should take over and it should not break down the complete network process so how to configure the redundant interface is the its interface redundant and the number the maximum number of <coughs> interface you can configure is 8 the maximum redundant interface you can configure on any AS device is 8 not more than that so you configure redundant interface 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 redundant one under this one you make you say that who are the interface you want to bundle in so member interface 
in our case e0 and e3 are the member of reader interface so run interface this is the only way uh, this is the only thing that you have to configure for the reader interface you will see over here see e0 and e3 are bundled up in one interface now what you are configuring on individual interfaces that you can configure on reader interface so how interface redundant one ip address 20.1.1.10 no shutdown name it outside okay let me go to r6 and on interface fa0 slash 1 no ip address interface fa0 slash uh, 0 okay it remains the same only right now if you ping 20.1.1.6 you are able to ping it right whether if you see do you have any ip addressing assigned on interface FA, interface e0 or e3 do you have any ip addressing assigned no right but where you have assigned so now if e0 fails if it is shut down e3 will take care and it will close the traffic but i cannot show you in the practical because at that side i should be having the same network e3 is connecting to the router actually in the redundant config the redundant interface configuration there should be a switch in between right and the another end is connected to a router 3 so two two links are connecting to the switch one link goes down anyway it is going to the switch so it is not a uh, layer 3 breakdown but just now what i done is i directly connected to the router so i cannot check like this I, I ping it and my packet still goes so that's how you configure the redundant interface but if you want to still check let's say interface fa0 slash 0 ip address 248 means what is the host block size 